Muy buenos días, un saludo al misionero Miguel Bermúdez Marín y a todos los ministros, hermanos y hermanas. Good morning. Greetings to the missionary Miguel Bermúdez Marín and all the ministers, brothers and sisters there in Guatemala in the congregation that the Reverend Eduardo Cubo the pastors and everyone present, ministers from different countries of Central America and also of Latin America and those who are seeing us through the satellite Amazonas and the satellite EUTELSAT-8, and also through the Internet. Today, Saturday, April 20th of this year, 2024, let us search in the book of Revelation in chapter 19, verse 11 and on, where it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his tie a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. You may please be seated. It tells us in the message time is in God's hand preached on October 9, 2004 in Bogota, Colombia our brother William tells us on this message on page 12 see Therefore, it is a divine promise for the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to be able to understand all these promises pertaining to this end time, and to see the movie, the drama that will be shown, carried out at this end time, it has to have audio, it has to have a voice. That voice has to have a message. Because the audio that the movie has, has the message of that movie. It has the revelation of everything that is happening in that movie. Therefore, for the end time drama placed in the scripture, in the biblical prophecies of all the prophets of God up until the Reverend William Branham, all of that, all those images, all those prophecies have a voice for the last day which will be the voice that will shake heavens and earth, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit. It will be the voice of the angel, the man that John saw over the waters. John saw and Daniel also saw. In this message, and know it is not, on page 13, He tells us. Now notice, I've actually looked like, our brother Branham says, looked like in times held a woman's mouth open and poured the medicine in her mouth and then hold my hand over her mouth and she'll spit it out every time. Let us... Read just a bit before. It says on the previous paragraph, Now someday, at the judgment bar, I know it's not popular to say it, and if a man is not ordained to say it, you better not say it, because you're impersonating, and then you'll get in trouble, sure enough. Now, notice, I've actually looked like, in times, held a woman's mouth open and poured the medicine in her mouth. 
and then hold my hand over her mouth, and she'll spit it out every time. What if a doctor did that to a patient? Then the patient died because they refused to swallow the medicine. At the judgment bar, when all these things like cutting hair and wearing shorts and I'm only building, the hour is close at hand when you're going to see something happen, when something is going to take place. And all this background here has only been laying a foundation for a short, quick message that will shake the whole nations. And there he writes, all nations. And he writes a message to that, the gospel of the kingdom. And on the front, he writes, on this message, I am placing the foundation for a short message. And he writes on top, message of the gospel of the kingdom. And quick message that will make all the nations shake. That is, if you want to mark it there, it's on page 157 on the book of quotations. Paragraph 1407. And there he also writes, a short message will come and will shake the nation. There, on top of the message or the excerpt of this message. And below, he writes Revelation 11, 3 to, from 3 and, it's a little bit blurry there, but it's Revelation 11. Now notice, our brother William continues to say here, And he will have to have an instrument of flesh for that man clothed in linen, clothed in white and in fine linen to speak. This is why he says, when this Holy Spirit that we have becomes incarnate, we'll crown him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And then we will have the audio of all that was prophesied from Genesis to Revelation and all that was spoken or prophesied by the Holy Spirit through the Reverend William Branham. In the meanwhile, it will be images and prophecies without voice, muted, because they are prophecies, images, that have been shown. For example, let us say, like in a movie, the Reverend William Branham says that a person dreamt that he saw him on a great big white military horse, and with an Indian chief garment. See, that's a movie. He saw something like a movie. And that is what is prophesied for Christ to carry out in this end time. But it was reflected in the Reverend William Branham, because everything that God is going to do, he first reflects it in prophets that are sent before he fulfills his program. That is why also, notice, he is presented as a king, as an Indian chief. And speaking, I will ride this trail, this path, one more time. That is, again. Now, the journey that the Holy Spirit will take in the fifth Elaja is reflected in the fourth Elaja. That is why in that dream that this person had, that is there around page 157. Miguel, 157 or 158 of the Book of Quotations. I don't know, someone has it here? Notice when he speaks about that horse and the rider, he says, great master, something like that. 156 in this one, paragraph 1410. It says around there that it was a great horse. And notice, he went much further west than he was when he was seen at first by this person in the dream. See? Elijah was seen in North America. But he goes, he goes further into the Western Territory. And the Western Territory belongs to Latin America and the Caribbean. That is also why the thunders, when the angels appeared, where did they go? They went toward Mexico. 
In other words, they went down toward the Latin American and Caribbean people. Somewhere here in this passage, he tells us about the white horse and the rider, and he tells us something like great master. Notice, and it also says, said there was a man sitting on there, said he was dressed in western garb, wasn't a cowboy, but said looked like a chief over ranger or something. See all of his chief authority from the west. You can read this passage later on, and there you'll find three dots. And our brother William continues reading. Great master, big white horse, walking right in line. He reads that small part of that paragraph. And our brother William says, in line, well, in line with the word, which is what represents. Now, let us go there to the part on the book of quotations where he tells us that is on page 157 paragraph 1410 and from the message that is an excerpt from the message and know it not and know it is not. August 15, 1965. And here it is on page 28. 28 de página. It is on page 32 to 34, because in the booklet he makes some important writings, and we will go on reading from the book of quotations on this version, which is the one that our brother William used. It says, let us leave this here close to go on seeing what he wrote there, also in the booklet. It says, he said, Mr. Branham, I realize I got to stand before God. He said, I don't know whether I was asleep or what happened. He said, I dreamed. I'm going to say I was asleep and I dreamt, said, I thought my son in the market stuck his hand in a sack and said when he did, it was a sack of apples and they all turned over and said, when I went to pick them up, there was all green apples with one bite taken out of them. said, I was picking them up, put them back in the sack, said, some of them rolled out and rolled down, so I went to try to get them, and under, on the grass, and said, they rolled under one of these chain lock fences, and there was a big superhighway running there, and I look back east, And he said, the chain was hooked against a big rock in the east. And I went back there, and I thought I'll let this chain down, then go over and get the apples for the man. Said, I started to let the chain down. Said, a voice shook the whole earth. Said, the earth shook from under my feet. And said, after it quick shaking, I heard a voice. And said, Brother Branham, it was your voice. Said, I know. There was something said that. Said, I said, I'll write this trail once more. And he writes Revelation 11 in the booklet. And to the left and to the right, he writes, I'll write once more. And here in the book of quotations, I have both of them open here. On one he draws Star of David, 
They're in that small corner. And also, we are going to go slowly here. Look, where it says, a big rock in the east, a rock, there he writes, Christ, on top of rock. When you find it there, you can mark that part there. A little further back, where he says, I look back east, And there he writes, Israel, on top of east. I look back east, and he said, the chain was hooked against a big rock. And there on the rock he writes, Christ, on the big rock. And back in the east, and there once again he writes, Israel. And There, under, where he says, I'll ride this trail once more, on top of ride, he writes, 50 Laja. Here in the booklet, to the right there of that paragraph, he draws a cornerstone and the ages. Let us turn to the page on the book of quotations. Page 158. 157 at the bottom, where that sentence begins. And I said, I started looking up the rock like this, and we turned to 158. And looked on in a past the clouds, and way up there, standing on a rock that reaches from the east to the west, in a pointed sharp like that, like a pyramid. There is where in the booklet, in that paragraph, he draws a cornerstone and the ages. And on rock, here on the book of quotations, on top of rock, he writes, Christ. Run back here to the east and said, There you were standing there on a horse that I never seen anything like it in my life. Great white horse. And there he writes Revelation 19 on top of it. On the booklet, I'm turning to page 29. Great white horse, white mane hanging down, and said, you was dressed like an Indian chief, with all the things the Indians use, said, he had a breastplate, then bangles on the arms, and all down around like that, said, you had your hands up like that, and said, that horse standing there like a military horse, with a prance like this, walking, me standing still, and said, you pulled on the reins, went riding off toward the west. And he writes, here in the booklet, West. The translation here says, he went riding off toward the west, He writes, West. He says there, went riding off toward the West. Said, I looked down there, and there was a, lo a whole lot of scientists. And the next morning, that was Saturday, on the next morning, I preached on scientists, you know, being of the devil. And said, scientists, they were pouring things in tubes and mixing it. Said, you stop the horse, raise up your hands again and scream, I'll ride this trail once more. And said, the whole earth shook. And there in I'll write, here in the book of quotations, on top he writes 50 Laja. 
Then people shook, said, look up and look at one another, like that. And looked up to you. They just shrugged their shoulders and went on with their scientific research. And there on the left, in the book of quotations, he writes, Revelation 7, 2, 14, 1. That is on the left. 10, 8 to 11, 11, 3 to 6, and 19, 11 to 16. Notice, the angel with the seal of the living God. Notice, the thunder is there. Notice the ministries of Moses and Elijah there. Notice the white horse there. All those symbols are the coming of the Lord. And said, you started going on toward the west. And when it did, said, I seen this man that called himself a prophet, you know, said, he come up on a horse that was mixed with white and black together. That is the Antichrist. And said, he got up behind this great big horse, said, it was, said, way up above the clouds. And the road wasn't over about that wide. And said, that horse just danced to the wind blowing the feathers and everything on your garb. And said, then the horse mane and tail blown. Great master. And here he writes, In this booklet, he writes, Great Master, Great Master, Big White Horse. And in the book of quotations here in this other book, he writes on top of Great Master, he writes, H.S., that is, Holy Spirit. And on the side upward, he writes, White horse equals great master. Great master, big white horse, walking right in line, and said, This guy ran up behind you. Come from towards Canada. And the man lives in Canada. And he said, come back and said, he took this little horse trying to knock your big horse off, turning him around, make his hips hit against the... said he never moved the big horse. That is, regardless of how much he hit him, they did not knock him down. He just kept walking, said, then all of the sudden, said, you turn around, said, that would be the third time you had spoke. And in the booklet here, he writes, the third time that he spoke. But the second time you said, I'll ride. I'm going little by little between these two, three places here what he goes on writing and said, you didn't speak like you did. You commanded. Said, you turn around and call the man by name and you said, get off of here. You know that no man can ride this road here without God being ordaining him to do it. Get off of here. Notice, in this ministerial trail of the ministries of Moses and Elijah, which in different places we have seen that he puts Revelation 19 equals Moses and Elijah, and he puts Revelation 19 equals Revelation 11. That trail cannot be traveled by anyone other than the one who has the ministries of Moses and Elijah in this end time. Get off of here. 
and said, The man turned around and said, The man had wrote me letters and said, Across his horse's hip, that black and gray and mixed up together, said, Across his horse's hips was wrote his name. Signature just exactly like this on his letter. And he wrote off toward the north. And here he writes, Russia, Rome, Europe. There on top of that part, there, said, you just went on down. And then you went on down. He writes, Latin America and the Caribbean, south, west, southwest. That big horse turned around, was as far west as you could said, you stood and raised your hands up like that. Then he started crying. Said, Brother Branham, to see that horse standing there, all that war bonnet and everything like that, and said, that breastplate and everything shine. Said, you held your hands up a little while and said, you looked down again, picked up the reins, said, I'll ride this trail Just once more. And there he writes the scriptures. In this book of quotations, he writes Hebrews 12, 25 to 29, Revelation 10, 8 to 11, and Revelation 11, 3 to 6. And here, in this other book of quotations, on top he writes, 50 laja. There where he says, I'll write this trail, he writes, 50 laja. Said, the whole earth shook back and forth like that. In the book there he also writes, 50 laja. And there he also writes Revelation 19, 11-21, and also there Hebrews 12, 22-29. I'll write this trail just once more, said. The whole earth shook back and forth like that. And said, there was no more life left in me. I just fell down a side of the rock, then I woke up. And there he writes in this book, in the booklet of this message, he writes, Earthquake equals when the white horse rides. He continues a bit further down. Let us go a little bit further down. Part of the other paragraph from that same page 158. But let us continue here where he says, Then I woke up. Next morning, Junior Jackson, he said, I dreamt Brother Branham, me and my wife, was out riding. And I said, I looked back in the east, and I saw it looked like a spot, like one of them flying saucers. See, the world don't know what that is. You know. You know it is on. We know what it is. See, we know it's investigating judgment angels. And he writes, like one of them flying. Above that he writes, flying saucers. And also, upward, in the part to the side upward, he writes, the flying saucers. See, the world don't know what that is, you know? You know it is on. We know what it is, see? We know it's investigating judgment angels, you see? And how at the Pentagon and all, about how it comes right down, and the intelligence, 
how they can go like a flash and be gone. Pull away from anything they got. See, they don't realize what it is, see? Let them think whatever they want to. They call it flying saucers or whatever. They don't know, see? He said, and there on top, he said, he writes flying saucers, and he writes flying saucers. In other words, he writes in between, they call it flying saucers. Under there, he writes flying saucers. Said, and I seen it coming, and I watched it. And what it was, it was a man on a horse, and said, he was coming with a lightning speed. Said, I seen he was going to come down in front of me. And I stopped my car, jumped out. When I did, said the car, horse was standing in the road. A great white military horse walking in a prance. That's the word, of course. White horse, he writes, white horse equals the word. And here in this other book of quotations, he writes, the white horse equals the word incarnate in a man. You know, walking in a prance, said, there was a man sitting on there, said, he was dressed in western garb. There on top of dressed, he writes western, And on the top he writes, Western clothing equals the veil of flesh. How was that instrument, that veil of flesh, seen in the fulfillment of that scripture in Revelation 19? In Western clothing. Now notice, let's go a little bit further down. Wasn't a cowboy, but said, looked like a chief over rangers or something, see? All of his chief authority from the West, the Indians over the Indians, rangers over, see? And said, the man had his hat pulled down and was looking sideways and said, when he turned sideways, said it was you, Brother Branham, said, you never talk like you did. Now, there he writes Revelation 19, 11 to 19. Now, let's go on here. In this message that our beloved brother William Soto Santiago preached, which he titled Joseph, a type of Christ. And a little part here where our brother William tells us, he says, he is reading When Joseph saw his brother Benjamin, he says, that means his brother on his father's and mother's side, because he's reading verse 29, where it says, and he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son. Brother William says, that means his brother on his father's side and on his mother's side, on the wife's side and on the side of the woman Jacob married. And said, Is this your younger brother, of whom ye spake unto me? But Benjamin had already eaten with him on another occasion, right? In the previous trip. Could it be that he grew up a lot and changed his appearance a little bit? Remember that young people, when they grow to a different age, being adolescent, even their voice changes, and also their appearance changes a little bit, and their height also. But Joseph was also very wise, very intelligent, 
And just as the angel of the Lord asked Jacob, the angel of the Lord knew who Jacob was and asked him, What is your name? And Jacob says to him, Jacob, see, here Joseph is doing more or less like that. Is this your younger brother of whom ye speak unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. He is asking God's mercy for Benjamin, which typifies 144,000 Hebrews. Our Joseph, Jesus Christ, asking God's mercy for 144,000 Hebrews. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep, and he entered into his chamber and wept there. And he washed his face and went out, and refrained himself and said, Set on bread, that is to set the table. And they set on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians, which did it with him by themselves. In other words, it was a lunch with guests, also with Gentile guests. It was an exchange, a social or political exchange, where these guests were. He continues to quote the Bible, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. And Brother William says, and if they go to Israel, then it's an abomination for the Hebrews to eat bread, bread in the style that the Gentiles eat, which is not kosher food or something like that. So they cannot be there eating meat of unclean animals, together with Hebrews who are there eating already selected food. He goes on quoting, And they said before him, The firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And their men were marveled one at another. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him. Here is a part of the vegetables of the vegetarian part. Our brother William says, But Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. Brother William says, Let us see something. This here, rather, is the first time he sees Benjamin. For on the other occasions, Benjamin had not come. He had not come. I said a moment ago that it was the second occasion, but it is the first. Here is where it says five times as much, the portion. The second time, but on that trip. Yes, the 29th, he says also in 16 that he saw Benjamin. So this is the third time he sees Benjamin, but without revealing himself to him. Remember that he is there with garments and as they dressed in Egypt. Egyptian garments. And he goes on to say, the third time he is already going to reveal himself. No, Miguel, it is the first time. Miguel there speaks and answers him there. No, Miguel, it is the first time that Benjamin arrives there. We are going to see the second time here in chapter 45. Let us see. There is where he placed the cup. There he placed the cup after the eight, and they made all the brothers return back with Benjamin. In other words, they did not want to let him go, and they wanted to keep him in Egypt, and his brothers could leave. You can read the whole story later on. They said to him, If we return without the young man, he will die, because his older brother died, that is, Jacob will die. And now he only has that one son left. In other words, that is his only beloved son from mother and father. That is what he's showing us here. If we arrive without that young man, he will die. That is, Jacob will die. In other words, they had to go through something that they were right and that Joseph understood. And Joseph understood because Joseph loved Benjamin, his brother, and he also loved his father. He did not want his father to die. And Christ loves the 144,000 Hebrews, but he also loves all Israel. He loves Israel. Now, when they return, and they returned with the young man Benjamin, because the cup was in Benjamin's sack, on chapter 45, around there says, Then Joseph could not reframe himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried. Here when he speaks to us, he cried. That is Christ, typifying Christ speaking. A cry is something 
that everybody hears, because you cannot listen to a person who speaks something softly, very softly, and say, so-and-so cried out. But if you listen to that person who says it in a loud voice, with all his strength, you say, he cried out such a thing, he spoke with force. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me, and there stood no man with him. He's already reading from the scripture. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Brother William says, look, here is, has the J, in Spanish of course, he has an S of Jesus, the J of Jesus, the S of Jesus, and the E of Jesus, only two letters, and there well, and the most important thing is the J. The most important thing is the J. He goes on to say, Does my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Here it is a type and figure of Christ in his second coming, speaking to them also of what his first coming was, where he was sold and crucified, because he was rejected by them. He goes on to say, that is reading the scripture, Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourself that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life to preserve the life of Israel and the life of his church, the life of the Hebrews and the life of the Gentiles. For these two years had the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he had made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say unto him, He is sending them with a message. Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me lord of all Egypt, come down unto me, tarry not. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me. Christ there, with a message of love, peace, and happiness. And thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, that is, the grandchildren, and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household, and all that thou hast, come to poverty. There in the part in the book of the ages, unedited, that he speaks to them, that he will speak to them with a message of peace and love. Let us see if we can find it here. Page, let us see, page 41 in the Book of the Ages, unedited. It is ages, the book edited, the edited book of the ages is on page 41 of the book of the ages. The edited one, so in the other one, should be closed which he also makes a writing there. But let us read that part from here. 
The Ages edited page 41, it says, but also seeing his wounds and knowing that they had rejected him even to that moment causes them to cry out in the agony of terror and fear, even as did their brother of old when they stood before Joseph, being so afraid that they would be killed. But as Joseph said, don't be angry with yourselves. It is all right. God was in it all. He did it to preserve life. Even so will Jesus speak peace and love to them. And there on the right, he writes, Joseph equals Jesus. And he writes, word of peace and love. There to the left. Let us see here also in this other book of the ages. On page... 35 of the book in Spanish. It must be this other one here. We go on looking and seeing all these places where he tells us On this other one, he writes, Love and Peace. Now, he goes on to say, here where we stopped. After he quotes, He's saying, And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. And our brother William continues saying, Christ doesn't want Israel to be poor. He will have at their disposal the riches that Joseph has, and therefore a great blessing. And behold your eyes, see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And our brother William says, he doesn't mention the others by name, but he does mention Benjamin and my brother Benjamin. And he doesn't call them brothers, but they are his brothers. And he keeps quoting, And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that ye have seen. And ye shall haste and bring down my father hither, And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talked with him. And our brother William continues saying, And there we have the type and figure of Christ at his second coming. Everything is going to be fulfilled, carried out, according to how it was shown in the types and figures. The types and figures, since they are said by God, they cannot fail. If you stand and place your hand like this in front of the light, and you see the shadow there, you see a hand with five fingers. When I see you, when I see your hand, you go like this. How many fingers would I see? Five fingers. So everything that was seen in type and figure will be seen in the fulfillment, in the reality. The types and figures will cease to exist. And what will it have? The reality. When you reach the reality, the types and figures lose its importance because you already have the reality. When you see the shadow of a person coming, it has importance while he is approaching. But when he is near, you will not be seeing the shadow. You will be looking at the person. You're not going to talk to the shadow. You are going to talk to the person. Look at what a great revelation our brother William is bringing us here, of which today we are seeing the reality of what they all talked about. He continues saying, and so it is, when that which is perfect comes, which is the reality, that which is in part is taken away. Those who stay with the shadow, 
lose the blessing of what that shadow is reflecting, lose the blessing of seeing and enjoying the reality. And what we always want is the reality, but we look at the shadow to know how the reality is going to be. The type and figure, the shadow, is prophecy in types and figures. We also have prophecies in words spoken by the Holy Spirit through the prophets. Notice, we look at the shadow to know how the reality is going to be. That is why Brother William told us, half the book of quotations, the ages, the seals, 70 weeks of Daniel, and all those messages. Because there is how the fulfillment of the second coming of the Lord would be. How the fulfillment of the seventh seal would be. And he said, if you do not watch, you will overlook it, you will miss it, and you will not see it. Now, Notice, this is what he's saying here, our brother William, in this message that we began to read of the time is in God's hand, where he tells us here, that's like a movie, because it was a dream he had, but, and it was all reflected in the fourth Elijah who was the one in whom the Spirit of Christ was working, just as Christ was reflected in Joseph, the son of Jacob, was reflected in King David, he was also reflected in Isaiah. See, the eunuch asks, of whom is he speaking? Is the prophet speaking here of himself or someone else? Notice, if there was no one to explain to the eunuch, he would be thinking and believing that Isaiah was the fulfillment of what he was reading. Our brother William goes on to say, for Christ has always reflected himself in each prophet he has sent. But you have to see who is the one speaking. Who is the one that is speaking when he says, I'll ride this trail, this path once again, once more. Every person knows that the man was not speaking, but the Holy Spirit speaking through the man. Because Brother Branham, when he said that, notice, at that time everybody thought that it was that Brother Branham was going to return. And it was the Holy Spirit speaking through the mouth of Brother Branham. But God took him away. It was not fulfilled in him. And now, when our brother William Soto Santiago, that prophet messenger that God sent with the good tidings, who we knew, and we have received his glorious message, which brings us the news of what God would be carrying out at this end time in the fulfillment of His coming. When He spoke, it was the Holy Spirit speaking. It was not the man. It's the same thing that happened with the Reverend William Branham. Every person knows that the man was not speaking, but it was the Holy Spirit through the man. And if someone wants to say or tries to say that he was the man, then he's nullifying the words of the Holy Spirit. Because then he's saying that he was speaking as a man and not the Holy Spirit through a man. Then they have to go the only way in order to fit their disbelief and say that he's going to come back again to fulfill that promise. It all falls apart. And there is no way to fit any piece of the puzzle together. They would be placing then, as Brother Branham said, the example of they place the cow on the tree to eat. Now notice, when you don't see that it is the Holy Spirit speaking through that instrument, and God takes that instrument away, then they stumble. 
Because when God then carries out the realization of those types and figures and all those prophecies and the reality of all those shadows comes to fulfillment, then they stumble with the reality. They stumble with the veil of flesh. So it happened with Elijah and Elisha. God commands him to anoint Hazael for king of Syria, Jehu for king of Israel, and Elisha taking his place as prophet. When he goes, he anoints Elisha, but he doesn't do the rest. Elisha understood that very well, because if he did not have that revelation that God works through a prophet, And that if God takes away that veil of flesh, that prophet, that instrument, God then rises another one. Well, if he did not have that revelation, then Elisha was going to say, no, I have to wait for Elijah to come to anoint these two kings because he only anointed me and that work is yet to be done. And he told me that God told him to do that work. Then Elisha was not believing in the way that God has always worked at all times. But Elisha knew that mystery, and he knew that if God took Elijah, the work that was still to be done had to be done by him. And the work that the second Elijah did not do, the third Elijah was going to do it. The work that the third Elijah did not do, the fourth Elijah was going to do. The work that the fourth Elijah did not do, the fifth Elijah did and will do. See, because God always works through his veils of flesh, through his prophets, through his human beings. They are his agents, his ambassadors. And if God takes away a prophet and he has still work to be done, then the chosen one has to be looking for, the human being has to be looking for, in that time in which he is living, must be looking for that veil of flesh, that instrument where God would carry out that work that is yet to be fulfilled in order to receive the blessings contained in that time in which the person is living. Now, it is for the believers. It is for those who are predestinated by God from before the foundation of the world. And look what he tells us here in this same message and you know it not. On page 18, it says, Now, the only way up here in this sphere is that you could ever be in this little inside man, and you have to be foreordained, because you was with God. You're part of God. I was in my father. I also was in my grandfather. And my grandfather's grandfather, by seed, I was in that. And I was in Christ. You were in Christ before the foundation of the world. He came to redeem his own, his own that was in him. Hallelujah. His children that was in him. He never came to save the devil's children. They never will know it. And they are so shrewd in the ways of their intellectual learning that you can't compare with them at all. You can't out-talk them. But by faith, you see it. And there he draws a star of David. Now, science don't need any faith. Science proves what they're talking about. It doesn't need any faith. Here in a writing, let us see if we can find it. that he makes. Referring to that page, let us see. Here it is. He writes, Christ Jesus never came to save the devil's children. Now notice why it is that the elect of God do understand and receive and believe 
the reality of those types and figures. Notice, of those dreams also, of which we are talking about here, of this great white horse, great master, and all those things that he's talking to us about. And we also read of our brother Branham in that quote, in that story. Now, our brother William keeps on saying, therefore, The journey that the Holy Spirit will make, Christ in Holy Spirit, from the seventh angel messenger and fourth Elijah, according to the scriptures, it is in the fulfillment of the fifth Elijah, second Moses, and ministry of Jesus for the last day. Those are the ministries that the Holy Spirit will be operating in the last day. And all this that has been carried out, which is the movie of the work of God for the last day, if there is no audio, If there is no message that is revealing all this that will be taking place, people will not be able to understand. It will be fulfilled in the midst of humanity, and the people will be seeing what is happening, but without understanding what is happening. It is very sad for the people who see the movie of what God is doing, and they also see the fulfillment of that movie, the reality, and they do not place their headphones or place themselves in the area where the audio is, to hear everything that is happening, to hear the audio of the fulfillment of the prophecies for our time, just as it was for other times. They do not put on those headphones. They do not put on those headphones are too. They are the ministries of Moses and Elijah, see, to listen. They see everything God is fulfilling at this end time. For example, we can place the fulfillment of the tenth vision. All that was shown by the Reverend William Branham in that vision is now a reality. They can see it in that scripture when he speaks about that vision. God is already fulfilling that vision. They see the great tenth cathedral made. They see preaching. They see all that, but they do not listen. They do not put their headphones on to listen. They see the movie without the audio. They mute it because they do not have that prophetic insight to be able to receive and understand what God is carrying out. They see everything that is happening under their noses of what was spoken, of what was prophesied, what was shown in visions and in dreams and everything but they cannot see, they cannot understand the reality. They see with their eyes, human eyes, not eyes of prophetic vision. And by seeing it in that human way, they may be seen, but they cannot hear. They do not understand what is happening. It would be, as he says there, a silent movie. And that is sad that after having struggled so much, having worked so hard, and when God is carrying out the fulfillment of all that, that is the reality of all that, not be able to understand in another way, that is, they are not listening, and that is, they do not understand what God is carrying out. They can see everything that is happening in front of them and they cannot receive it. Now, that's sad for those people. See, as he says there, they see the movie of what God is doing. They see the fulfillment of the movie and everything. They see the reality. And because they do not put on their headphones, they cannot hear the fulfillment of that promise. Now, we have seen this part of this account there where our brother Branham shows us and our brother William also spoke to us about all this. And we have seen what that vision or that dream means 
in which we see that he wrote there the white horse equals the word. And in parenthesis, he writes there, incarnate is a man. And we were going to place that subject, the white horse equals the word incarnate in a man. The white horse equals the word incarnate in a man. It's been for me a great privilege to be with you there in Guatemala through this means and to talk like this in this fellowship around the Word of God and to read here all these things that were shown in dreams, visions, and prophecies which were type and figures, shadows of what now is happening in the midst of the church. Today is the fulfillment of all of that. And we see that word incarnate. We see that white horse rider incarnate with Western's garment. In other words, Western garments, what he wrote in the little part here, Western clothing equals the veil of flesh, the veil of flesh with Western garment. For that was how the type and figure was shown there in the life of Joseph in the midst of Egypt, where his brothers seen him those who went to Egypt and saw him in the midst of Egypt as the second in command, with garments like the Egyptians, that is, with garments different from an arrangements and all different to the Hebrews. So it is at his second coming. Well, Everything is simple, and everything will be so simple that when they come to realize it, those who do not have the headphones, it will be then too late because God has already carried out the work and has already given the rapturing faith to his church bride, and Israel would already be sealed when they least expect it. But there are things that will not be spoken so that imitations do not arise and neither hinders what God is carrying out. And everything is being fulfilled according as he had told me. Well, may God bless you and keep you. And thank you very much, Missionary Miguel Bermudez Marin, for this opportunity that you allow me to have fellowship with you in this activity. May God bless you and keep you all.